So that would be uh, when we have the, uh, we're going to have in two weeks, we're going to have the uh, uh, General Assembly, and uh, we will distribute the, the, uh, the uh, November parts to you. And again, uh, take them home, you don't have to do it right away. In November is uh, so we still have another month to go before the end of the year. So take those cards home with you and, and uh, do the best that you can for the year. If you get, uh, and I always say, you can be a 1,000 story the best way. For those who uh, struggle a little, a little more, uh, $20 a week, and, uh, and that would be uh, $1,000 for the year. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's one way uh, of doing it. So again, as I said, we have the General Assembly on the 30th. Uh, we should all be there, and, uh, and the rest you can pick up your steward, your uh, weekly here, and, uh, and, um, and see what the, the rest of the announcements are. Excuse my sitting, but uh, uh, just a bit out of breath. So I don't know why, but a lot of things happen, so, uh, so I'll sit. Anyway, uh, you know, today's uh, gospel again is uh, of those of God sowing the seed, and uh, and what does he mean? What what does it mean that he sows the seed? That it's some fall on, on the stone, on the rocks, and the birds come and, and they eat them up, and and some of them uh, uh, fall fall on the rocks, but it's a little bit of soil, and they get uh, and, 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 the, and the, the, the seed grows for a while. And as fast as it grows, because of the heat of the rock, uh, uh, when, uh, it doesn't have roots, so it, it dies off uh, unexpectedly. And uh, that seed that falls on the, uh, in the, in the weeds, while the sower is sowing the seed, it's going fall on the weeds. Uh, but it begins to grow uh, while the weeds uh, surround the children. And uh, again, that uh, falls on the good side. I remember when Father uh, Yaga was when we were doing our service of the Holy Cross and, uh, and he was talking about uh, the good seed. He was talking about how, uh, how the good seed can grow and he used, the, uh, he used this uh, point of history when this uh, uh, St. Vladimir of Russia, the Prince of Russia, <coughs> He was looking for he was looking for a religion that the, the country could have, and so he sent out emissaries. He took the plate. He went to Rome uh, and he went to other places to see how they can worship this country and worship. And he sent two emissaries to uh, to Constantinople, and they. Uh, they uh, went to the, uh, the, the divine liturgy and they came back to, to the prince and said to him, we never, when we went to the liturgy, we did not even know if we were in heaven or on earth. It was so beautiful. How the people worshipped, how the choirs were singing, how the priest was speaking. All these things we did not know if we were in heaven or on earth. So they go back to the uh, they go back to Russia and they tell them that and Prince Vladimir through his uh, through his grandmother her name is Olga Olga uh, was uh, his grandmother she was she happened to be a Christian a Orthodox Christian and she was trying to talk to him anyway and she convinced Vladimir of the, of that. And here he converted the whole country. The whole country was converted to Orthodoxy. All the people were baptized. So we have the good soil. What one person can do, Olga. Actually, Father was not talking about Olga, he was talking about another uh, woman, her name was Anna, uh, which also uh, spoke to Vladimir to convert. One person, what one person can do in the world. One person to go to the world. And to go back to, to convert, converting us to Christianity, St. Constantine also. Thousands upon thousands of people became Orthodox because of Constantine and his mother, uh, Eleni, uh, became Orthodox. The good 
good seed. Good seed. And how many times do we, do we hear about so many good people in the world that do such good things that it affects so many people? It affects so many people. And yet, what happens to the seed that falls on the, uh, on the rocks? Well, it says, if they don't give that glory to God, it's simply, uh, it's, it's worthless. Uh, it doesn't belong in God's kingdom. The person who doesn't care, the person who's eaten up by the temptations of the world. And it says, and the devil comes and plucks the seed and takes the seed. What happens to them? Do they have an effect? Well, I'll tell you, I remember when I was a young man in the 60s, or close to the 70s, I lived in Washington Heights. That's where I lived, in New York City. And it was pretty prim, pretty honest time of the year of, the, of uh, our the nation. And I remember walking one day, and it was on uh, St. Nicholas Island, I remember. And it was on the wall, it said in, in the orange paint, the name Daki, T-A-K-I. And then, who paid attention to it? Until we saw it all over the water, and we went around with the dark face. Ducky, Ducky. After that, there was another name, in black paint, I remember. What did that happen? What affected one man that happened in the whole world? Billions and billions of dollars. Graffiti. All the, all of the filth, the dirt, yeah, and they pulled it off on other people's property. And what did it, what the, how did it affect the world by billions of dollars? The subways, wherever you went, wherever you, wherever you went, to, and there was the effect of one person, one person. And guess who that person was, by the way? It was a, a New York Times picked it up. And he, he happened to be a Greek. He was a Greek. He, was a Greek. he went to St. Spirit on school. He was just a kid. And he was the one who started. And, and, uh, uh, and his brother going to school, and my children were going to school as well at the same time. And I didn't know him. I didn't know him. But that's the way it happened. He was not an evil kid. I'm not saying he was probably a good kid, you know, kind hearted, a little bright, but I put his name on the walls and things like that. But what did it start? It's the effect of one person. How it started. How it started. One person. So you have the opposite effect. And what did that say to us? God was telling us something. He said the, the seed that fell on there where the weeds were. The word, the person that, and he's talking about how we look and, and, and address ourselves and act upon our Lord and our Savior. How are we? It's, it's really, again, this self-examination of self. Who am I? Am I the one that, uh, uh, yes, uh, like the one that fell on a rock, I, 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 boy, I, I went to church and boy, how beautiful it was. I just felt, I just felt it. I, uh, the God was in, the Holy Spirit touched my soul. And he's all excited. And what happens? To go outside. And then all of a sudden uh, the, the temptation is there, and as fast as it grew, as fast as the soul grew, it fell. Because it didn't have the roots. In other words, we didn't continue and, and continue our faith. And continue to honor God and continue to be who we are to us. So that's the parable of the seed, the soul. Because the apostle said to him, We don't understand what you're saying. Uh, when you say a seed that fell on rock and seed that, so he explained it. If you are, we are the seed. God is the sower. And who are we? Whatever we are, we should examine ourselves. Who am I? Am I of the good seed that fell on the good soil? Do I honor God the way I ought to honor God? And if you are, God bless you. May he bless you. And he says it. Those are the ones who receive the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, the only one who said that does not receive the kingdom of heaven is the one that fell on the, on the, on the soil, on the rocks, 
and the devil came and plucked it off. And it says it here, and that person or persons will not receive the kingdom of heaven. He doesn't say anything about the other, so we don't know. However, he does say at the end, those who fell on good soil will see will receive the kingdom of heaven. The in-between is God's judgment. Well, how will God judge? So it's a beautiful parable. Again, the analogy is wonderful because it's a, it really tells us how do how do I grow? How do I how do I perceive the, uh, the people around me? How do they perceive me? How do I, have I affected uh, my children? Have I affected my parents? Have I affected my, 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 uh, my friends or my acquaintances? And how, did I, uh, how did I affect them in a good way? By kindness or compassion or whatever it might have been. Or how did I uh, offend them? in a different way. And not doing good to cause things that, that were not good or you know, foul, foul language. And how did I affect them? How did I affect my children or more than a lot of people? So again, self-examination. And it's God, again, who says it. He's the one who says it. Which one are you? And the only one I can answer that is you for yourself. I don't think anybody else can answer that anymore. Except if it's extraordinary. Unless it's extraordinary. So it's a beautiful uh, parable of God and saying and, and giving us a, an identity for us with ourselves uh, in, in, uh, in relationship with Him. Who am I with God? And who I am with God is who I am with my fellow uh, loved ones and acquaintances and friends. Beautiful parable. And may our Lord and Savior bless you all.